Welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 16 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about adding items to the drop-down list control at design time using the HTML. We'll also learn about adding items to the drop-down list control at runtime using the code. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop the drop-down list control from the toolbox. Now remember that whenever you know we want the we want to present to the user a list of choices from which we want the user to select only one choice, then we choose drop-down list. We can also use radio button list for that purpose, but then the problem with the radio button list is that as the number of choices grow, uh, you know the the amount of space that the radio button list occupies will also grow. We will talk about radio button list in a later video session. Okay, so if you have you know a lot many choices to present to the user from which you want that user to select only one choice, then drop down list is the control that we can make use of. Now, if you look at this, I just dragged and dropped a drop down list control. It doesn't have any items within that. So obviously, when I run this page now, the drop down list will be empty when the page renders, as you can see it here. So we need to add items that we want to display within this drop down list control. And to add those items, you can do that at design time, okay, at compile time. So how do I do that at design time? Right click on the drop down list, select properties. Within the properties window, there is this items collection property. Now, one golden point to always keep in mind is that drop down list is a collection of list item objects. We will talk about list item objects in just a bit, okay? But at this point, just keep in mind drop down list is a collection of list item objects. So when I click this ellipsis button next to this items property, so it's a collection. So when I click this ellipsis button, you see this list item collection editor. So a drop down list is a collection of list item objects and this is a list item collection editor. You can add a list item here. So when I click add, look at this. These are the properties of the list item objects that we commonly use. The text is the text that gets displayed in the drop down list and the value is usually the one that gets stored in the database for example if you display a list of cities within the drop down list you have city name which appears as a text in that drop down list okay for example like sydney mumbai um, you know new york etc now when i select a city within the drop down list and then maybe submit that form you know in the database instead of saving the city name it will actually store the city id okay in the integer so if you have a different value than the text then use the value that will be behind the drop down list Okay, and you can retrieve that value using the selected value property of the drop down list. We will talk about retrieving the selected values in a later video session. This session is all about adding items to the drop down, li drop -down list at design time and at run time. Okay, so obviously I want to set the text. Let's say text is mail and the value is one. Okay, and then I want to add, you know, female is the text and the value is 2. Okay, so let's click OK. So now if you look at this list item collection editor window, I've got two list items. Okay, now I can move them up or down using these arrows just in case if I have, ad if I have added them in the wrong order, you can move them up and down using these arrows here. Okay, so now click OK. Now when I run my application, as you might expect, it shows both these, uh, you know, list items within the drop-down list, male, female. Now if you actually flip to the source mode, look at that. The list item collection uh, collection editor window, when you added items there, it actually uh, generated this HTML for us. So the values are here, and this is the text. You can either uh, you know, include it between the opening and closing braces, uh, you know, angular brackets of this list item, or you can actually use the text property. So text is equal to mail. So you can do this as well. Okay, and if you flip to the design, you should see mail, you know, the same as before. But then I'm using this text attribute here instead of just wrapping that text uh, between this uh, opening and closing tag of list item object. Okay. So this list item, if you, if you look at this, the way it looks right now, it shows male and female. Male is the first option in the drop-down list, so it appears as if it is selected. Now let's say when this drop-down list renders, I want the female 
uh, you know list item to be selected in the drop down list how do we do that this list item has got another property called selected so if you set that to true then when the drop down list renders that list item within that drop down list will be selected here we set the selected property to true for female so if you look at this drop down it it has set that to selected okay so there is another property called enable and if you look at this you know for a drop down list if you set the enabled property to false that means you're technically disabling that which means that option will not be shown in the drop down list so if we run this now only male option will be shown because you have disabled female list item by just setting enabled equal to false so these are the you know commonly used properties of the list item object but then the drop down list itself is you know a collection of list item objects so we have seen how to add list items at the design time you know you can do that um, in the html directly or you can uh, use the list item collection editor window from the properties okay this window that we have used okay but then you can also add items to the drop down list at runtime using code so when the act when when the page actually renders you know i want to add items to this drop down list is that possible absolutely okay now keep in mind drop down list is a collection of list item objects so obviously if i have to add items to the drop down list using code then i have to create an instance of list item object and then populate all the properties that are required at least the text and value properties and then add that list item object to the items collection property of this drop down list it's as simple as that let's see how to do that so let's say when the page loads i want to do that so we know that drop down list is a collection of list item objects so list item let's call this mail list item is equal to new list item object and if you look at the constructor you know there are several overloaded constructors of list item class you know this is one constructor which is taking text and value so the text that I want to add is male and the value is one so that's one list item object so let's create another list item object for female so let's call this female list item and let's say female and obviously the value for that is going to be 2 okay and the reason why you have this red squiggly line here is because uh, the text and value both of them should be strings so wrap them in double quotes and everything should work okay cool so we have the two list item objects that we want to add to the drop down list so you have just created those objects so obviously you need to add them to the drop down list so the id of the drop down list is drop drop down list one that's the drop down list to which i want to add these items so select that dot it has got an items collection remember this drop down list is a collection of list item objects so how do you get to that collection property using the items property so items dot add so to the items collection you want to add a list item object look at the add method the IntelliSense says it expects a list item object so we need to pass these list item objects one at a time to the add method okay so we passed male list item now I need to pass in the female list item okay so now when we run this we are actually adding these list items you know at runtime during the page load and remember look at this when you you have to be extremely careful when you add list item objects on the page load event okay the reason is look at this let's say I have let's flip to the design mode look at this at the design time I don't know what items are going to come into this drop down list because they are determined at the runtime they're calculated at runtime and we are doing that in the page load event so let me just put a button control there let's run this page now and as the page loads because in the page load event we are actually adding those list items so the drop down list shows those male and female uh, list items within the drop down list now look at this we are doing that within the page load now when i click this button the page load event will be fired again right so it's going to add male and female again 
okay now we know that web works in a stateless protocol so how is it remembering them because asp.net view uh, controls makes uh, use of the view state so the view state has actually remembered the previous values within this drop down list and when you click the button the page load event gets fired on the web web uh, you know server again and then another set of male and female is added so every time you click this button this male and female list item objects keep adding to this drop down list and we don't want that to happen so if you don't want that to happen then add these items only if it is the first you know initial get request of the web form and how do we determine that using if not is postback property okay so now if we run this no matter how many times you click the button it only loads it the first time the web form loads that's why you will not have the duplication so no matter how many times you click this button you only have them once so be cautious when you add a list item objects to the drop down list on page load event okay so drop down list is a collection of list item objects which we have talked about the list items can be added to the drop down list at the design time or at the run time if you want a specific list item to be selected in the drop down list set the selected property of the list item object property uh, object to true to hide a list item in the drop down list set the enabled property to false now remember not only drop down list you know the controls like checkbox list radio button list all the list controls checkbox list radio button list you can see them here checkbox list radio button list bulleted list list box all these list item objects are actually collection of uh, list item objects so if you know how to add items to a drop down list then it's it's very easy to understand adding items to these controls because it's essentially the same you are adding list item objects okay but then one thing that is a little different is this um, you know enabled property if it's a radio button list you know this enabled property if you set that to false then that choice within the radio button will be uh, disabled in the sense you cannot select or unselect that okay but for a drop down list it will be hidden altogether okay so to hide a list item in the drop down list set the enabled property to false if you are adding list item objects to the drop down list in the page load event make sure you do only when the page is loaded for the first time otherwise every time you post the page back for example by clicking a button the list items will be added again and again causing duplication on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.